Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Igor and I am a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we are going to talk about glutamine, the amino acid that uh, theoretically can be used in intestinal diseases, especially uh, inflammatory bowel disease like Crohn's disease or ulcerative colitis or short bowel syndrome. And we will discuss this review article about the roles of glutamine in intestine and its impl implications in intestinal diseases. First of all, glutamine is non-essential amino acid, meaning that our body can produce it. And usually it is enough. You don't necessarily need to get it from food or uh, from some pills. And it's very abundant in uh, muscles and blood especially. It is needed for detoxication, uh, for uh, immunity, for cellular growth and division, for DNA RNA synthesis, uh, for uh, normal work of an, our own antioxidant system of our body, for glutathione, for energy metabolism, for synthesis of neurotransmitters in our neural system. But there is a theory that during really acute and severe conditions, the levels of glutamine drop and it may worsen situation even more in such serious conditions like trauma, like sepsis, like um, COVID cytokine storm, like uh, uh, exacerbations of autoimmune conditions, for example. And what if we give glutamine to such patients? Will it improve their situation? Actually, there are some clinical studies answering this question. And um, why are we talking about intestinal problems? The thing is, 30% of our glutamine is metabolized in our intestine. That means that our intestine needs glutamine a lot. And it's needed for normal function of intestinal barrier, for modulation of inflammation, of immunity and uh, to protect intestinal cells from dying from apoptosis. You can see the nice figure where authors um, are showing the mechanisms of action of glutamine in intestine. And we know that it can be anti-inflammatory, especially during ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, colorectal cancer. It has anti-apoptotic activity. It, uh, it is precursor for glutathione, which is antioxidant to protect from free radicals. And we know that in patients with Crohn's disease, for example, there are low plasma levels of glutamine. And uh, we also have a list of animal studies showing that uh, glutamine supplementation may protect the intestinal mucosa in animals with inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease, ulcerative colitis. So what if we use the same in people, in human? And uh, in uh, the systemic review by Garcia de Lorenzo, uh, glutamine and rich diet were shown to improve immunologic uh, aspects in trauma patients and to ameliorate mucositis in post chemotherapy patients. We know that in uh, chemotherapy, uh, often uh, the patients get the adverse reaction of chemo drug called mucositis, the small wounds and ulcers um, on their lips, in their mouth and everywhere in their uh, gastrointestinal tract. It's very painful and it may um, cause uh, patients not to eat food because of the pain, for example. That's why it's a serious adverse reaction. And um, they show that in their systemic review that glutamine in these conditions may be a good thing, good glutamine supplementation. To get some effect in Crohn's disease, uh, the minimal dose might, might be 21 gram per day and 42 gram per day for short bowel syndrome. However, there is a number of studies that did not observe any improved outcomes. For example, Signet study, uh, they gave uh, it into vein, glutamine into vein to critically ill patients and they didn't uh, observe any good effects. The same Redox study uh, they gave it to critically ill patients and they also found some bad results. And also, Akoberg examined the effect of glutamine enriched 
uh, diet, 8 gram per day, smaller dose that than in the systemic review, and uh, they examined 18 children with active Crohn's disease, and no changes were found, but 18 children is not a lot, you understand that. And uh, six studies showed no improvement in short bowel syndrome. But there are, ma there are many limitations in these studies. We don't know if uh, this uh, uh, amino acid glutamine is really deficient in uh, acute conditions, if this theory is uh, real. Also, reduced plasma concentration during critical illnesses is not... Uh, specific for glutamine, many amino acids will drop down. Also, parenteral supplementation is not natural, because glutamine must work in the gut, and uh, it doesn't restore glutamine depletion in muscles in those patients. And also, plasma glutamine doesn't correlate with the severity of disease. Doses of glutamine may be very low in some um, some studies and uh, the period of supplementation may be very long, as long, uh, very short, as short as two days, for example. For example, in systemic review, I told you before, they used quite high doses and for uh, 30 days at least, but here you see two days and uh, some doses are very, very low, meaning that currently, of course, we don't have enough data to support the glutamine supplementation in uh, these conditions, but still we need more uh, studies to check if uh, glutamine is worthless or if it is valuable in such conditions. What is the dose needed, minimal dose, and how long should we use it? And of course it's always quite safe to get uh, glutamine from just food. Of course, it's uh, animal products, it's meat, eggs, milk and milk products, cheese, and uh, some vegetables like cabbage uh, or beans, beetroot, uh, spinach, etc. And this is all for today. I hope it was interesting for you. God bless you. Bye.